Hey campers, in this video, I'm going to show you another option for making paint blobs or dollops or dabs or whatever you wanna call them. Instead of paint blobs, I use paint can lids for the colorographies I make for the colorography lab here on campchroma.com. As long as you don't change the original art and design, you are welcome to copy and paste these lids and use them wherever you want. I have the colorography open for Hail Navy and I'm going to walk you through step by step the best way to use these lids. You might be wondering, what the heck is a colorography? <laughs> a colorography illustrates the most important attributes for a paint color. Let's start with Hue Family right here. The Color Strategist color wheel shows you what Hue Family Hail Navy belongs to. As you can see, it belongs to the purple blue Hue Family. Next is the value scale, and the eye icon indicates how light or dark a color looks, and of course, Hail Navy is a darker color. The chroma scale tells you how neutral or colorful a color looks in real life. Hail Navy doesn't have a lot of chroma, which means it's more of a grayed, neutral navy versus bold and colorful. And last is LRV, or light reflectance value. LRV is a quantity. It tells you what percentage of light a color reflects, and that's why it's a scale of sunshines. As part of the colorography, I like to include a paint can lid so there's a nice big swatch of the color for reference. I include the color name and number with the lid right here, you can see it. So when the lids are shared on social media, it's not just some random blob of color. So that's what a colorography is, and that's how I use the lid swatches. Again, as long as the original art and design isn't changed, all the colorography artwork is copyright free. You don't even need to link to or cite Camp Chroma as the source. I understand that you might not want to use this color name and number label, and you are not obligated to include it. It's perfectly fine if you want to use the lid without the name and number. I'm going to show you how to remove it in this video. Right click on the lid and you can copy it. You just select copy right here and it saves it to your clipboard. If you're going to paste it into a PowerPoint slide, this works beautifully and let me show you how that works. I'm just going to right click on my slide and choose paste and there's the lid. Once you get it on your slide, you can easily size it to fit your layout. I'm just going to hold down my control key. I'm on a PC, grab a handlebar and we can size it smaller or bigger. If you size it bigger, you have to be careful not to go too big because you can lose some resolution. It really works better if you size it smaller. And I can drag it on top of the rug that I have here. So it works really well for mood boards and concept boards because it's a floating pink hand lid. There's no background. And so it's great for um, you know layering different elements on the board. Unfortunately, this method doesn't work so well if you're using Photoshop. Let me show you what I mean. If we copy the lid and then paste it into a Photoshop document, we lose the transparent background and it fills with black. So I'm going to come up here to edit and I'm going to click paste and there's the lid. I could have also done control or command V to paste it in. This is a glitch in Photoshop, and there's nothing I can do to build or save the file differently so it doesn't happen. <laughs> Believe me, I have left no stone unturned trying to find a solution for this. So we have no choice but to deal with it, and I have two different ways to get around this glitch. The easiest way is to select the black background with the magic wand tool. So I'm just going to come over here and grab my magic wand tool and click on the black background and then just hit delete to get rid of it. I'm going to hit control D on my PC to deselect the lid. You may have noticed we also selected and deleted the color name and number because they're black too. If you didn't want to use the name and number anyway, this might be the ideal method for you. The only downside with doing it this way is the edge of the lid might not be as clean and crisp as the original. Now, you can play with different settings in Photoshop, so when you delete the black background, you get a cleaner edge, 
but that's more involved than we can get into in this video. The edge actually isn't all that bad and it can work, especially if you size the lid smaller. So I'm gonna do that real quick so you can see it. I'm just going to hold down the control key and hit the letter T and this is the transform tool. I'm going to grab the handlebar here on the corner and hold down my alt key so it constrains it equally horizontally and vertically and you can see I can size it larger and I can size it smaller. So if we go a little bit smaller, I'm gonna hit enter and I move my lid over onto the rug, you can see that the edge doesn't look too bad at all. And we have this floating effect with no background around the lid. So again, it's perfect for a mood and concept boards. But what if this doesn't work for you? What if the edge isn't clean enough? What if it's not crisp enough? Maybe you would like to have the name and number label. So the thing to do is to save the lid to your desktop. So let's walk through how to do that. I'm going to go back to the Colorography Lab, back to the original lid, and I'm going to right click on the lid. And instead of choosing Copy Image, I'm going to choose Save Image As. And this opens a window so I can save it on my desktop. I'm good with the file folder. I'm good with the name. I'm just going to click Save. Then I'm going to open this newly saved file in Photoshop. And there it is. Once it's open, I'm going to hold down the control or command key if you're on a Mac and type the letter A to select the lid. And then I'm going to control or command C to copy it. Next, I'm going to hop over to my layout, to that rug layout where we pasted in the lid before. And now I'm going to hit control or command V if you're on a Mac to paste in this new lid. And there it is. It's super clean and crisp. This looks a little fuzzy and it's only because of the transparent background. If you were to save this to a file, you can kind of see it a little bit better on the rug, how clear it is. It's kind of the effect from uh, the checks in the background, I think. But um, if you were to save this as a file, it's not going to look fuzzy at all. So don't worry about that. But you have nice clean edges and the image looks crisp. There's no black background and the name and number was left intact. At this point, if you want to get rid of the name and number, you simply use your eraser tool. And in a few clicks, it's gone. So I'm going to go over here and grab my eraser tool and come over here and just kind of carefully line it up, not to get too close to the edge. And in a couple clicks, it's all gone. And that's it. You have two methods to import these lids or to paste these lids into a Photoshop file. You can either just copy and paste it or you can save the file to your desktop and then open it and then paste it in. We currently have a hundred or so colors in the Colorography Lab and we're constantly adding new ones. Our goal is to eventually have all the most popular colors from all the major brands in the lab. If you want to learn more about the color attributes illustrated in the Colorographies, then I encourage you to sign up for the Four Pillars of Color course. In it, I will teach you all about hue, value, chroma, LRV, and a whole lot more. I guarantee it's the best, most complete, and professional color training you will ever experience. Go to campchroma.com to sign up and start the course immediately. Your access to the course never expires. I appreciate your joining me here, and I invite you to follow the Land of Color business page on Facebook and connect with me on LinkedIn so we can stay in touch. Bye for now.